Great to see you, everybody. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. This is Tuesday, August 2nd. Now, in case you didn't know, I like to look at OTC and penny stocks on this show. I like to focus in on stocks that got potential, stocks that investors are talking about, stocks that got news. Now, this is news I've personally looked at over the last five days about the OTC market stocks. The oldest is at the top. The newest is at the bottom. And there's a lot of fresh news here. Now, we also look at penny stocks. Penny stocks are any stock under $5, and they can be on any market, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC. And we're going to be looking at a few of those today. Now, right now, we are over here at the OTCMarkets.com website. Now, I know this becomes tedious to a lot of you, but folks, honestly, this is my best jewel for research. The OTCMarkets.com website, because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all the relevant and important information we're constantly looking for. And seriously, if you're going out doing searches, you're wasting a lot of time and probably getting frustrated. Research shouldn't take a ton of time. You can get a heck of a lot more done if you find current information where you're going. And that's all they have here is current information. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. It's pretty much a duplicate of yesterday. We have the same dollar volume, 2.1 billion. That's our average. Our share volume went up just a smidge, but we're still under 10. Heck, we're under 8. We need to get this up. And our trades, we can't even get back to 250,000, which was our low average. So yeah, it wasn't a great day today. However, regardless what the market's doing, there's always something going on out there, and I got a basket of goodies I'm going to share with you right now. Come on. First stock we're going to take a look at is not on the OTC, but it is a penny stock. It's under five bucks and on the New York Stock Exchange. This is ticker CZOO, Kazoo Group. Now, Kazoo Group had some great news come out today, and the charts prove it. The price just launched. She finished today at $1.05 with only 118% gains. Now, when you think of Kazoo, think of CarMax. You know the online used car shopping site? Think of that. That's exactly what this is, except this one is in Europe. We see down here in the very bottom corner, they are in the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Spain, and Italy. And this is an entire used car dealership online. They've got over 250 different makes and models. You can shop here, of course, that's what it's all about, but think about that, you've got a huge selection, much bigger than you're gonna get at one car dealership's lot. They also finance you here. They'll even deliver your car if you don't wanna pick it up. Now, of course, that does leave the concern of the test drive. It's the one thing you can't do with online shopping. So, to alleviate that concern, they've got a confidence package, and it really is what is boosting this company's reputation over there right now. They tell us that every car they get goes through a 300-point inspection, has been fully reconditioned, and has had recent service and an MOT. Now, that's real important over there in Europe. I don't know about all the countries, but I do know about the United Kingdom. I lived in Scotland for 10 years. An MOT is a car inspection for safety purposes every six months. They check your tire wear, your headlight alignment, emissions, a whole bunch of stuff. And if anything doesn't pass, you don't get that magic sticker in your windshield and you're not allowed to drive the car until you come up with the money to go make the repair. So that's great. They also have a seven day money back guarantee. Pick up your car, have them deliver it to you, whichever. You get to drive it around for seven days using it. And if it's not what you think, if you're not happy, you can take it back, they'll give you all your money. Pick another one. How simple is that? And if you're really worried, it comes with a 90 day warranty along with 90 days of roadside assistance. So they've got your back no matter what you're doing. And as I said, it is this confidence package that has built the reputation of the company and they are growing at an extremely fast rate right now. So what is the relative volume around the news that came out today? It is kicking. We got 3.5 million normally for the last 30 days. Today, we got 139 million. So you're looking at like 4 million to 140. That's over 35 times her normal volume. That is kicking, folks. Share structure, we're looking for that float. Now, a lot of times you'll see a number in the float section. I don't trust it. What I do trust are the unrestricted shares, as close to the float as you're going to get. Now, they don't list it here, so I did use Google. <laughs> 
went to a few different sites. I was getting a few different numbers, but they're all between 450 and 459 million. So our float's somewhere in there, which isn't a great float. What is great? Their financials. Man, they have really turned up the heat generating revenues, and they're doing a hot job of it too. Now remember, we gotta take these three zeros up here and put them behind these numbers. Makes a huge difference. Their total revenues for the end of 2021 were over $900 million. You're talking like that shy of a billion dollars that they generated. Now it cost them a lot of money to make that money. It cost them $870 million. They only got to keep 33 million, I say only. Compared to the last year, they were four million down in 2020. Only did 221 million, have now jumped to 904 million. And the news we're gonna look at today is about their most current financials and it's even gotten better. Now their disclosures, they do have a few new ones that just came out today. We got three of them here, but all of these are about their financials, about their earnings, and we can get that information from the news. So we're gonna jump on over there right now. Now they had two pieces of news come out today, one in the middle of the day. Kazoo shares surged nearly 200% on Q2 earnings, and it went even higher than 200%. And then the news we're gonna look at, Kazoo announces second quarter and first half of 2022 financial results. Now this did come out today and they have a lot of information. This is one of the longest news presses I've ever seen. Don't worry, we're only gonna look at what's highlighted here, but this is the entire news press all the way down. Oh my God, I think that's the entire disclosure. So we're just gonna come back up to the meat in the sandwich. Now they tell us here that they have made record revenues of 333 million euros in Q2, which is up 145% year over year. And most of this has come from the growth in the United Kingdom's business. Now, 333 million euros is roughly 340 million American dollars. So it is real close. Vehicles sold is up 124% year over year. Retail units sold, that's up 94% year over year. And their balance sheet remains strong with over $400 million in the bank with $175 million in self-financed inventory. In other words, they got a lot of cars, 175 million euros worth of cars. They also tell us here that despite having launched only two and a half years ago, we have now sold over 80,000 retail units entirely online, including over 30,000 in the first half of this year. And we achieved record revenues in the first half of 628 million euros. So you're looking at about $650 million just this year which is up 153% year over year, comparing it to the same time last year. And that's really all we need to look at, folks. They're making a ton of money. Their business is growing. That confidence package has definitely got the confidence of the consumers over there. And I guess the used car market is pretty big. So let's go take a look at that chart, and I'll show you just how high she got today. We're gonna be doing our charting over here at my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. This is Think or Swim, also known as TOS. If you want it, just sign up for their free trading account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. God, I hate saying that. But seriously, just keep your account open and you can use this platform anytime you like. So we are looking at a six month, four hour view of ticker CZOO. But I've got a scan open over here for very good reason. This company has a bonus. Remember I told you this was a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. And like most major exchange stocks, this company has a warrant. And normally when the stock runs on the company, the warrant runs too. But the warrant is normally a lot cheaper. In this case, the stock was about 50 cents and the warrant was 6 cents. Huge difference. But check out this huge difference. The warrant moved a half a million shares, roughly, to get 157% gains today, a half a million. The stock for the company moved 140 million shares. You're talking like almost 280 times the share count and it got less, 118% gains. That's why I like warrants. Whenever the company gets exciting news, check the warrant out. You may get a better play at a better price. 
So we're gonna look at the warrant as well, but let's start with the company stock. This is the six month, four hour chart. It goes all the way back to November. We got a high bubble back there of $9.79 and a low bubble just a few days ago of 45 cents. What a drop. Now keep in mind folks, this company has been in business for about two and a half years. And last year, 2021 was a big year for revenues for them. And 2022 is even getting bigger. So why is this price been falling since the end of 2021 when they were in a good boat and they're in a better boat now? Because it's under the radar. Literally, folks, nobody is paying attention to this company. Well, at least not until today. Today, that news press put it in front of everybody, and I do think that the investors are going to be paying attention to this company now. We had a huge jump here. You can see these little fingernail price bars became trees, became mountains, and we're above the 200-day on the four hour, which we haven't been for six months. Our technicals are blazing, folks. They're literally screaming. Every single one of our oscillators are pointing up. That's a win, win, win situation here. Looking at a 20 day, one hour view. Absolutely nothing going on until today. Humongous amount of volume compared to all the days before. Huge jump in the first half of the day. Huge drop in the back half of the day. Technicals are still very warm, but they are starting to cool off as would be expected. Five day, five minute. Let's just zoom in on today. Now, curiously enough, this surge started at about 7.15 this morning at 50 cents. By the time the bell rang, it was up to 75. So it was already up 50% by the time the bell went off. And the first five minutes right there, folks, looks like she was in a lull. Looks like she was about ready to fall and then changed her mind and took off. And by 10.15, she was already up 200%. Then we hit a high here of $1.79, which gives you about 235, 240% gains at her high. Then it fell all the way back down to 118% going through all the SMAs. And even after market, she's dipped just a wee bit more. Now I've got my attitude lines here. This is kind of like the Fibonacci. I like to draw a line at the beginning of the surge at the bottom, draw another line at the top where it ends. That's normally the high bubble. Then I find the center. Now, I just eyeballed this, but you can do it mathematically, but close enough is good enough. What I'm looking for is the price to be above that middle line. I want to see it keep 50% of its gains. Normally, if it stays above that line, there's an 8 out of 10 chance that it's going to stay above that line and at some point continue growing. But if it comes underneath, and I don't mean like that, that's still touching the bar. That's okay. But you start drifting away like this, that's it. You normally start dribbling down, down, down until you hit the next strongest SMA, which you might bounce off of, but who knows. So there's a very strong likelihood that this could come down to the 200-day SMA. Technicals are very weak. They aren't showing a whole lot of strength at all right now. However, this has been under the radar. People are paying attention to it now, so we may start to see some activity. And more importantly, the company's got value and is growing. Now, let's take a look at that warrant. Let's go back so you can get a four-hour view of the warrant. She was just like the stock. She had a high bubble here of $2.25, fell down to just over $0.06. Cents. And not showing any enthusiasm, even though the company was growing. And just like the stock, it was today that it bounced. Now, I'm just going to come right on down to that five-day, five-minute view. So, she had a little lift yesterday. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe in anticipation of the earnings. Actually, that wasn't yesterday, was it? No, that was yesterday. Shit, no, that wasn't yesterday either. Kind of tough to tell what was going on here with the warrants. Warrants aren't always bought, folks. They don't always get transactions. But when there's good news, oh yeah, you can count on a moving. So she started the day. She dropped down to six cents, got up to 31 cents. Oh my God. Wow. So you're talking 500% gains at her high. Now, how long did she stay up there? I want to come down to the one minute. She was only up there one minute. I mean, she blasted up there and came right back down. So it really doesn't count. I would call her high at about 22 cents, which is over 300% gains. And look, folks, she has definitely kept, do I got the right line? I do. Drawing that attitude line, my Fibonacci sort. I'm going to put that in the middle best I can. She's right there. 
she is hanging on to this. I'd watch the warrant tomorrow more than the company myself, but that's just me. But you get my drift. Whenever you're looking at a penny stock on the major exchanges, they're probably going to have a warrant. And if there's great news that's got that stock running, it's probably got the warrant running too. And you can get into it cheaper. And a cheaper price means bigger gains because the percentages are a lot bigger when the price is small. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock I got for us. Here's another stock that exploded like dynamite today. This is ticker APDN, Applied DNA Sciences. This is another penny stock and it's on the NASDAQ. Now this company had a lot of information come out today. They had a couple filings and they had a news press. Some of it was bad news, in my opinion, and some of it was really good news. And it looks like the good news won. They finished a day at $2.80 with 311% gains. Now, I'm not real sure about this description, folks. They tell us here that Applied DNA Sciences is the only company in the world that is making use of the complex codes embedded in botanical DNA as the ultimate solution to counterfeiting. And then they go on to say a bunch of other things. Well, the news, the filings, I don't see the connection here, but I'm really not worried about it. I understand what I read in the news, and I understand why it ran today, which is really what's most important. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Holy cow, holy cow. We're looking at like 400 times her normal volume. She went from about a quarter million to 111 million shares. There was a lot of people around this company today. Share structure, what do we got? We have a low float is what we've got. Outstanding shares is 8 million. So even if I didn't look it up, you'd know it's under 8 million. And actually, it's just about that much under 8 million. I think it's like 7.9 million is the float. But in whatever it is, it is a very small float, which is probably why it ran so much today. Financials, is this company making money? Hey, they are making money. At the end of last year, Bringing down those three zeros, they did just a little over $9 million. Had to give up about half of it, so they got to keep half of it. Quarterly, they doing anything recent? Oh, man, they are kicking gears. Look at this, folks. We are up to $6 million in just the last quarter. So they are picking up momentum. There's no doubt about that. Disclosures. All right, this is where we start to see the information. We've got an 8K that came out today. That correlates to the news. So we're going to read the news instead of actually looking at the filing. Then we have an S1A that came out yesterday. So this is the bad news. The S1A is what I think is bad, and the 8K today is what I think is good. And I think they played this as a strategic tactic because the bad news, as far as I'm concerned, was going to pull the price down. But that 8K shot the price up to the moon. So what does this S1 say? Well, this tells us that they are doing a public offering. They are going to be offering 14 million shares of common stock along with 14 million Series A warrants and 14 million Series B warrants. When you add that all up, folks, you're talking about 42 million extra shares they're going to be throwing into the common stock. That is going to dilute the heck out of it. Nobody wants that. You got a low float there. Why are you going to go ruin it by throwing another 42 million shares? Now, it is only 14 million initially, but once the warrants get cashed in, those all go into the share pile. So that's not what I consider good news. You see a lot of stocks fall when public offerings come because it dilutes the shares. But when you jump over to the news, that's a whole different story. Now, they don't have the news that I'm going to share with you actually listed here. They didn't bring it in. Thank goodness I still use Google. But to put everything in perspective, this news came out today as well. Biden names top officials to lead monkeypox response as more states cite emergencies, which leads right into the news I found today over here at Business Wire. Applied DNA initiates analytical validation of PCR-based diagnostic tests to specific monkeypox virus. Applied DNA Science, a leader in polymerase chain reaction based technologies, announced that its wholly owned clinical laboratory has initiated analytical validation of company developed PCR based monkeypox virus test that is specific for the genetic signature of the monkeypox virus. 
if the test is validated by ADCL, a validation package will be submitted to New York State Department of Health for approval. If approved, the test will be used to power ADCL's monkeypox testing service. And this is going to be big, just like the COVID testing was. People want to know if they've got it. And first movers are going to be making all the money. And this, I've seen, you know, a lot of monkeypox vaccinations and medications but this is actually the first test i've seen i'm sure there's more of them out there but boy is it making a difference in this company's price let's go take a look at that chart god i kind of feel like we're late to the party here this is ticker apdn six month four hour chart we got a high bubble back here in december of nine dollars and 88 cents and just about a week ago we were at a low of 62 cents She's been under the 200 all this time until today. Today, she just ripped. I mean, she set new records. She was at the bottom of everything, and now she is going, going, still going. Technicals, every single oscillator is ripping it up, folks. They are blazing and screaming right now. I really like what this stock looks like. 20-day, one-hour view. Absolutely nothing going on. Look at the volume. That volume is insane. There is nothing back here even close to that. And look at the aftermarket hours. She is still running. All of our SMAs are perfectly set up. Now, I got to say, there's a big spread between this 10 and that 20. And these are like rubber bands. When the SMAs get further and further apart, sooner or later, they have to come together. Now, a lot of times, what you'll see is instead of the price falling, back down to an SMA, it'll just start going sideways and it'll wait for the SMA to catch up to it. And once it gets, the price goes off again. Maybe that'll be the case here. Technicals are still on fire. Every single one of them, the RSI is an overbought. MACD is a tsunami. This is the ADX. It shows trend strength. Now, all you're looking for is a long line. It can be going down or it can be going up. It changes direction as soon as the trend changes. And right now, this shows that this uptrend is not changing. It is still going up. And the PPO, our price oscillator, I always like to see that pointed up because when it's up, the price is moving up. This looks dynamite. Five day, five minute look. Look at that, folks. She finished the day at 311% right here after a fall. I'm not quite sure what she was at here, but she can, it's still moving. It just moved again. So this stock is still trading right now. We had a high bubble after market hours of $5.68. We started off this morning at, uh, geez, 8 in the morning. She started running at $0.64. Cents. We are just about 850, 900% gains on the day. And it isn't done. It's still going. Everything looks good. Now, I got to admit, all the technicals right now are very cool. Nothing looks inspiring on the technicals on the five minute. But I'm looking at that volume pre-market. I'm looking at that volume after market being pretty much equated to the volume during the day. And that's not normal, folks. Normally, you'll see a big day like this. And even if it's climbing, it'll just be a little tiny blue bars down here, little tiny ones, not these huge monsters. This is getting a lot of attention, folks. Look, do yourself a favor. Put APDN on your watch list for tomorrow. Watch for that volume. If you see volume building up in the morning like it did today, be ready. Be ready. Now, this is on the NASDAQ. You can buy it pre-market. You don't have to wait for the bell to ring. Matter of fact, you can also buy it on a market order. So if it's running up, instead of trying to grab a price and it passes you and you got to put in another price and it passes you because it's just moving too quick, put in a market order. That's like throwing a hook on a passing boat. Wham! It'll just grab you up and you can go. It's not a guarantee, but it's the best thing you got going if it's running. And this ran all day, had one serious drop down to the 50. Scared everybody, didn't it? Right there, it came underneath the 50, bear trap. People thought, oh, that's it, she's done. You know, she's been falling all day. She's gonna fall even further. People sold and then it bounced, went right back to work. And she is coming back down to the 50, but I don't know where she's gonna bounce, folks. Aftermarket hours are always unique. I like to think of it as the wild, wild west. What goes on in the middle day, I can sort of follow. What goes on over here is just a wild cat fight. I never know what's going to go on. So I keep my eye on this, not just for tomorrow, but for the rest of the week. How many companies are working with monkey pox 
tests. I don't know of a lot. It seems there were a ton of them working with COVID tests and all of them were doing great. There's probably only a handful of these and this may be one of the first movers. This could be the one to keep your eye on. Third stock we're taking a look at is Two Hands Corporation, ticker TWOH. Now this company came out with a filing today. It was a very simple filing, not a lot of information, went right over my head. I didn't think anything about it. But then maybe that's because I'm from the wrong country because she had a strong gain today. She finished today at 24 cents with almost 140% gains. They too are on the pink tier and current. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now I'm telling you, always look for these green ticks on OTC stocks, especially pink. This is verified information. It's information being validated by the OTC markets behind the scenes. Not quite sure what it is, but whatever it is, it is important. And when it all comes up green like that, I feel good. Now we got a bonus here. We get a little peek into what they may be thinking. They've got independent directors. You do not need independent directors unless you have plans of uplisting. Doesn't matter if it's to the QB or the NASDAQ. You must have independent directors. So maybe they have plans to do that here soon. Now this business description, it's different from what I recognize. This used to be a cannabis company and I wasn't sure if they were still in cannabis or not. So what I did is I jumped into their most current financial and I did a word search. I looked up cannabis, CBD, never came up. So it looks like cannabis has fallen to the wayside. Their new business description, Two Hands Corporation is a food distribution company through three on-demand food brands, Go-Kart City, Grocery Originals, and Cure Food Services. Now, Go-Kart City is a division of Two Hands Core. It is an online grocery delivery marketplace that services the greater Toronto area. They curate and deliver the freshest produce and specialty foods in Southern Ontario. Cure Food is a division of Two Hand Courts and they import and distribute quality Italian foods and they work through a lot of different channels to get their products out there. So what was the relative volume around this company simple filing? <laughs> Well, she normally only does 19,000 shares a day. Today, she did 685,000. Now, that's not a huge number, but that is a huge increase percentage-wise. Share structure. We got a low float here. Not super duper low, but it is a nice float. We got about 31 million. I can live with that. Financials. What sort of money are they making? Bringing down those three zeros, they did $930,000 at the end of last year, almost a million. But look at the year before. What a jump. That is a huge jump, folks. Disclosures. Well, this is the place where the story is told. The 8K came out yesterday. I thought it was today. Came out yesterday. This is it. The 8K states that on July 28, 2022, Two Hands Corporation received conditional approval from Canadian Securities Exchange for the listing of its common shares. A date for trading is subject to the company meeting the CSC required conditions. Basically, they're getting their stock listed on the Canadian market. Now, I would have presumed a Canadian company was already on the Canadian market. Now, maybe they are on the TSX or something. I don't know. I really didn't look into it. But they are on the United States side, and now they're going to get onto the CSE, which obviously was a big deal, especially to Canadians. But it was the U.S. side that was running. So they were U.S. investors that responded to this news. So let's go take a look at that chart and see that big gain she got. Anybody else feeling some deja vu here? This is TWOH's six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high bubble back here in November of $3.10. Been under the 200 all this time. Hit a low bubble of $0.05. Cents. Wow, that's a huge recovery gain there. Now, TWOH has a lot of volume. She has a lot of followers. I see a lot of buzz out there. She's obviously had a change of operations at some point in time. I don't know when, but it doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot of love. Now, it could be market sentiment. I really don't know. But today, today was a whole different story. She came from underneath every single SMA and got on top of them all. Volume was insane today, as are the technicals. They are still ripping and screaming up. 
20 day, one hour view. So we've had some bounces in and out of here. You know, it's fun to play a bounce here and there, but nothing like what we've got going today. Yesterday we started the climb. You can see she came out from underneath the 10, got on top of the 50, that's that big bar, then pushed right up on top of the 200 at the start of the day, and the bars got bigger, and she has been zooming all day. And the technicals do not look like they want to rest on the one hour. They are still pumping and pushing up. Five day, five minute. Goodness gracious. So this run actually started yesterday at about seven cents, and it got all the way up here to 24 cents. But this morning she started at just about 10 cents, roughly 10 cents. So you had about 150% gains. She had a wee bit of a pullback here and we're at 139% gains. No need for my lines. We can see she's well above the 50 and she is still slowly climbing. Technicals aren't hot, but they're not cold either. They're still warm. I can see the embers here. I would watch this tomorrow morning. I don't know about a long run on this. However, they seem to have a solid business. The financials are getting stronger, faster. They're growing at a, qu a quicker rate. But I would watch this in the morning up until about 10, 10.05 in the morning. See if there's any MOMO on this, some leftover momentum. See if there's any leftover play. I would expect it to only last to 10 in the morning. So whatever you can get, just take it and get out. It may continue running. Blame me if it does. But if it doesn't, you can thank me tomorrow. All right, I've got a few stocks that we didn't actually get a chance to look at because of the time constraints. But I'm going to show you the ticker and the catalyst I found, and I'll let you pick up the DD from there. So I've just got a few stocks here to share with you. The list could be endless, but I got to stop somewhere, folks. But these were a bit interesting to me, so I'm going to share the ticker with you and what I found interesting. This is ticker GSFI, Green Stream Holdings. Finished today at a great price, triple zero nine, which is one of the reasons I'm showing it to you. Double zero one is my favorite price in the world to buy a stock at because there's only one digit behind that one. And as soon as it moves around, it goes to two. Well, that's 100% gains. Buy it at 001, go to 002, and that much of a movement, and you've made 100%. Go to 003, you've made 200%. So I'm always looking for those. Well, they had news come out today, and this is the news. Greenstream Holdings, an emerging leader in the solar utility and finance space, in response to shareholder requests for updates, today said that it has significantly been reducing company debt and has, at present, no plans for a reverse stock split. Well, that's good news. I mean, they're reducing the debt and there's no reverse stock split. But is it worth 28 to 40% gains? Well, you know, I think they like the reassurance because when you look at the share structure, let me get over there to the share structure, you can see they've got a ton of them in the float, 2.5 million. That is just screaming reverse split. And when you look at their financials, which is the other factor to consider, they have no money, not on the annual basis and not on the quarterly basis. So it would be an easy way for them to get their stock price up and bring the market cap up on this in a faster pattern. But they aren't doing it, and the investors were happy with that. The next one we're looking at is another triple zero. This is triple zero five at 66% gains. They had a filing come out today. This company, Harrison Vickers and Waterman, along with Penn Merger Sub and their subsidiary, Pacific Energy Network, have entered into agreement plan of merger. They are doing a merger. There's more information in this filing. I haven't done any deep dive. I don't know a whole lot more about it, but it is a merger at a triple zero stock. If it's nice, if it's a good merger, this thing could move quick and you can make some serious money on this price. Last one I want you to consider. We've talked about this stock couple times. This is CMGR, Clubhouse Media Group. This is at 0016, real nice price. They had 18% gains today. I think they may have been a little bit higher, but the reason I'm pointing this out, this company is a influencer company. They go out and hire people who have reputations, football stars, movie stars, singing artists, and they use them to influence media to sell products, to sell services. Well, every time they hire somebody, every time they bring somebody new in, like they did today, 
Clubhouse Media Group Inc. closes promo deal with Steven Jackson, NFL Pro Bowl running back. Every time they do this, there is a bounce in the stock. And depending how famous the person is, you get a big bounce or a little bounce. But it is a bounce nonetheless. And the last time we looked at this, they got a football player who's in the Hall of Fame. Holy cow, did this stock run. It blew up bigger than anybody anticipated. You can see all the bounces before it, and you can see the bounces after it. You see it. So I'm always watching this stock in the news, not on my charts. This company... See who they are bringing on to the team. If it's somebody you think is a big deal, watch the stock that day. You may be able to make some money. Well, folks, DD is where I get all of my information. I'm digging around. I'm flipping stones. I'm eavesdropping on conversations because that's where it's at. It's not always right in front of you. It's just wherever you're at. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.